I made a really conscious choice early on that like I wasn't going to ever let you know a family member having a different political belief about something you know interfere with my relationship with them if it it was going to be severed it was going to be because of them but I'm not going to let this very conscious effort to divide families impact me and the people that I love I made that decision that being said I do trust people more who kind of see things the way that you and I do because I'm like oh okay they're observant. They're noticing these little breadcrumbs in our lives. Again, that's what I call them breadcrumbs and they're sprinkled everywhere. So yeah. I, I do inherently trust people more who see it. Cause I'm like, okay, there's, they see what I see. I'm not saying I like them better. Um, or that like, I love people any less who see things differently than me, but that I do inherently trust them a little bit more and trust their judgment more. And there is that relatability. Um, I won't lie. I definitely have fewer friends than I did before this stuff all started and before I left news. Um, but then again, our, maybe that just means that those were people aren't, weren't true friends anyway, because my friends vaccinated or not, or who are my true friends are still here. I didn't make a huge splash when I left my job. I think a lot of people expected me to. I think management was a little bit worried because I didn't do a live shot on my last day and I'm sure that was on purpose. Uh, I think that they expected me to like, you know, go on air and go on some tangent, but that's not my style. Um, I left very quietly and then I just kind of reemerged about two months later with my own little rumble show. Uh, but I, yeah, I left quietly for sure. But I think that you have to realize that like, not everyone's going to be supportive of it. I mean, I had a friend who I've known forever and she unfollowed me on social media on her public accounts, but on her private personal accounts, she still follows me. And I'm sure That's because she doesn't want to be seen with me to jeopardize her own television career for working in the same kind of space that I do. Um, But in private, I get a ton of support. In public, not as much, but in private, overwhelming. Even uh, most of my coworkers that I worked at with my old station will still call or text me and say that they agree with me on stuff, but they just were like, oh, well, I have kids, so I couldn't risk losing my job. Or, oh, I have a mortgage, so I couldn't risk losing my job, so I can't stand up to it. But like, I secretly have the same concerns that you do. Um, and I'm willing to get, you get a lot of that too. I bet you at dinner parties, people agree with you, but how many people are going to retweet you in your personal life? How many people are going to like really, uh, because they have their own jobs to think about. And if they work for companies that have this image to maintain, they don't like them spreading that kind of messaging. And I, I don't really blame them, but at the same time, they're part of the problem. Yeah. Well, the, the, there are people in my life that, that, for example, I've known for years who, mm-hmm probably we thought that we were politically aligned. You know, we probably thought that Margaret Thatcher was a good thing. We believed in, we were conservatives and we believed in, we believed in, I don't know, the, the things that conservatives in Britain are supposed to believe in, the royal family, the, the army, the, the British empire and stuff. And, and I realized that in those cases, we've diverged massively. I don't, I don't believe in left and right anymore. I think they're, they're complete constructs of this illusion of, of choice, whereas before I did. So I'd refer to somebody as a lefty and, and, and I'd dismiss them and, and somebody on the right was probably, I would call them sound. But for example, I, I, was at a, I was at a drinks party the other day and I was talking to these two chaps who hitherto would, we'd, we'd have, we'd have chit-chatted about this and that, but we'd have got on completely politically, but we got on the subject of, of Ukraine. And this chap, well, both of them actually, just, just laughed down the noses at me. I mean, they, they laughed in my face, like I was a complete nutcase who hadn't a clue what he was talking about. And the only, the only response, the sensible response was, was derision. And I thought, this is not a very English thing to do. You don't laugh at people at um, the different views. You kind of might mention it to the wife on the on the drive home. Like, oh, gosh, I had an extraordinary conversation with with James Ellingbrook. Yeah, yeah it seems to have. But you wouldn't <laughs> you wouldn't make your contempt uh, and derision obvious. And I thought this is this. Well, apart from anything else, I learned how far I have I've moved on from the kind of the mainstream. But also I realized what deluded idiots people in the mainstream are. They think they know everything and they know nothing. And I, you know, I, I didn't feel embarrassed by this incident. I didn't feel like I'd been belittled. I just thought you are stupid twats and you, who think you know everything and you know nothing, which is sad. Yeah, that's funny you mentioned that. I mean, 
I felt that way all the time. Like people think I would have people in this line of work. A lot of people think they're experts about something. I'm like, no, I've been in your shoes. You got your assignment at 10 AM. you got a press release and you can't become an expert at something by 5 PM by the time your story airs. Uh, but you're going to talk about it. Like you're an expert. And I know deep down they're like, uh, you know, like if I'm going to do a story about taxes, uh, I'm not an accountant. I'm not going to have the knowledge that somebody who studied this for years and years that has been working in this field for years and years has, but they're going to have me go on and do a segment on how to tackle your taxes coming up at five o'clock. Um, but there is this sense of like, and especially when you want social media, like I do think that like reporters think that they know everything <laughs> and it's like, oh gosh, it is a little bit cringy. I think the whole point of journalism is accepting what we don't know and like trying to better our understanding. I trust reporters because I think I had that realization when I was like 25. I'm like, wow, I used to think that I was like the smartest bitch ever. And now I'm like, oh, there's so much. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm not right about everything. I'm not. And that's like a big pill to swallow. But that's when like the second half of your life begins when you realize how exciting it is that there's so much more for you to learn. No, I, I agree. I'm, I've, I've just been writing. I wouldn't mention it, but I'm, I've just been writing a chapter of my my next book on on this and looking back at my past and looking at that. I used to think I was not the smartest guy in the room, but one of the smarter ones. You know, I'd had a ritzy, yeah, I know what you mean. ritzy education and I believed in. I believed in the paradigm and I was very good at everything to do with the paradigm. So I knew about history. I knew about literature. I knew about politics, I knew all these things. But what I realize now is that my belief system was based on propaganda and, and lives. I mean, so much lives, so much of our history is 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 false history. Um everything we know about the history of vaccination that we were told is a really good thing, you know, and Jenner and smallpox and and and, and all that, or I didn't know the true origins of the second and the first world wars. I mean, really almost the bigger the stuff, the, the more false the narrative about it is. I can see why people have such difficulty making the leap because it is like taking the red pill when you, you've been living in the blue pill world. world. You know, most people mm-hmm. would kind of rather eat the synth they meat and imagine that it was a real steak rather than going into this world where you discover that nothing you it's hard. But let me ask you, um, uh, before we, I, 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 I could talk to you for hours, actually, Alison. And, and I think so. <laughs> we're going to have to do, the, the fact is, because of the nature of our work, we just, we're like magpies and we collect lots of information, like <laughs> when you kidnap somebody, give them sugary food. They're really yeah. useful. I, I, I'm not going to forget that. But um, we're definitely doing another podcast. But I wanted to ask you, um, what do you think it is about you that, that was immune to this, you know, how come you saw the light? What is it about us that, 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 that we can see where other people can't? I think when you're confronted with information that goes against what you know to be true or what you, you know, the facade that you see in front of you for so many years, you have two different choices. It's going to make you uncomfortable. So you can either go with it and suppress that new information to reaffirm those biases that you already have, that you've been brainwashed with this propaganda, Or the more difficult decision is you can stop, take a deep breath and digest it and think, huh, okay, maybe I don't know everything. Maybe I, there, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've been lied to. And that's a tough pill to swallow, but that's the thing. Not everybody is willing to have those hard conversations and have that tough pill to swallow and look to alternative sources and maybe think, oh, okay, maybe something's greater is going on because we're taught to suppress that gut instinct that something's wrong. We've been in so many situations where things just don't sound right. So many things in the beginning of COVID, you're like, oh, that, that doesn't exactly sound right. Like that's kind of fishy, but we have to trust the science, like Actually, a religion. Yes. And now I feel science with a dollar sign. We have to trust the science. One of the and things that- That's how you get people to blindly follow it. And I think there are people who are just now waking up that wish that they woke up two years ago. 